Hey guys, so today I have a video that I am very excited to finally be sharing because this is one I've been trying to get to for a few months now and I just haven't had the time, but today I'm finally going to be showing you guys my pet room. I've shown you guys my pet room quite a few times in the past, but a lot of you probably know a few months back I actually lost a couple pets and I made the really hard decision to rehome a couple and ever since then I did change my pet room around a ton. So I thought we would start 2019 off with a pet room tour just to get all of you up to date so you know which pets I have, where they're at, and just kind of what is currently going on. Before we get started, I wanna say sorry for the lighting in here. I know it's pretty dark. It is night and I'm just using the overhead light. I didn't wanna drag my ring light in and like shine it on the reptiles or anything. So I'm working with what I have, which is one puny little light bulb up there. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna to try to show you most of the pets in the video. I know we won't see everyone. I'm sure we won't see Fiona and I actually don't think Pippa is out and I need to feed Pippa later tonight. So I don't wanna pull her out because I don't wanna stress her before I try to feed her. But other than that, I think we should see everyone. So let's go ahead and just get started with the pet room tour. So this is actually what you see as soon as you walk into the room. So I'll just give you a quick overview before we go into everything in more detail. So over here on the left, we just have the closet. I do keep some animal stuff in there, like some gerbil bedding, but I also have like clothes and stuff in there and you guys don't care about that. So we won't go through there. After that, we have the gerbils, chicken and waffles. And then back on the back wall, I just keep some supplies like my feeder insects and other foods. And then over here is my favorite part and probably the part you guys are most excited to see. This is where I keep all my reptiles and my one amphibian. I currently have 11 pets and nine of them are in the pet room. The only ones who are in here are the dogs, Ellie and Steve, of course. They do come in here sometimes, but only supervised and only when no enclosures are gonna be open. And I am going to be opening some enclosures in this video, so unfortunately they're not going to be in it. But seven of my 11 animals are on this rack right here. This is a new rack that I got from Home Depot, so this hasn't been in a video before. It's a little bit bigger than my ones in the past, so I was able to fit everyone on here. Even when my couple animals that aren't in their adult enclosures yet, when they get their upgrades, everyone will still fit perfect. So that's basically it for the pet room part. Over here, I just have a spare bed. Since I rearranged and everything, I was actually able to fit my spare bed back in here so when my parents visit I don't have to shove them to the couch and they can actually have somewhere to sleep so this is now a multi-functional room again so it's a pet room and a spare bedroom but now that you guys have seen an overview let's take a closer look and we'll start over here with the gerbils so first we're going to take a look at the gerbils this is my pair of gerbils chicken and waffles they're female gerbils they're about two years old now I believe they're currently the only small animals I have chicken is up here trying to see if I have anything for her even though I just fed them them. So they are in a 40 gallon brooder aquarium and then they have this wire top. This is a custom made wire top that I got off of Etsy. If you just search for cage top around Etsy, you should be able to find it. I've really been enjoying their cage since I put the topper on here. I know in my last dribble video, a lot of people were worried about the wire floor because I do just cover it with grass mats and I don't cover it completely. The reason I don't cover it completely is because the wire floor is the only way that the bottom of the tank gets any ventilation. So if I put tile or anything over it, the whole bottom isn't going to have any ventilation so the grass mats I feel are just a good medium they do let some airflow get in there and go through but the majority of the bottom is covered so it protects their feet they're also not up here a ton they do spend the majority of their time down in the bottom section because they have about a foot of bedding down here that they make intricate tunnels and nest in so they're mainly up here just to use their wheel and to eat they're up here right now because I just fed them so chicken is scrounging around for some food I do scatter feed them just to give them some enrichment. So those are my gerbils, chicken, and waffles. Underneath their cage, I just keep a lot of their accessories such as extra chews and hides. The stand that they're on is actually from Home Depot also. It fits 40 gallon breeders perfectly. And then they have their food and everything. I feed them the Higgins Sunburst, the same thing I recommend for hamsters. Mainly they just have a lot of extra wooden chews and toys because my gerbils are insane chewers. So the gerbils are over here to my right. There's not any animals on the back part of the room, but it's a very important part because there's is where I keep a lot of my supplies along with my feeder insects. So all of my feeder insects are actually on this shelf right back here. My two main feeders are the dubia roaches, which are in here, and the superworms. I don't actually breed dubia roaches. I get a lot of questions about that. I know it is supposed to be pretty easy to breed them and you can save some money, but since I don't have a ton of reptiles, I don't feel like I would save that much and it would be extra work. So I don't mind just buying them at the expo. I have a reptile expo here every other month, so I never have to worry about running out. And if I do run out, I can just order them easily online. So I don't breed dubia 
me roaches, but I did actually try to breed mealworms, which is what are in these. This one is actually empty, but this one still has some mealworms in it. I was actually having quite a bit of success breeding mealworms, but I actually don't feed mealworms that often because they're not one of my favorite feeders. So I decided to stop. I'll probably give the mealworms I have left. I'll give most of them to my mom because her chickens love them. But as far as breeding goes, I don't think I'll breed any more insects in the future. It was fun to kind of play around with, but I just don't think it's worth it for the small amount of reptiles I currently own. And then over here to my left, I just have some more supplies, mainly feeding supplies. So I have food for my gargoyle gecko along with extra food dishes, my calcium, my vitamins, everything like that. And then I have this really cute little chameleon up here. He is from Home Depot. He's probably the only chameleon I'll ever have, or at least for a very long time because this is the only chameleon I feel I can care for. Um, but he is very cute and he always stays in here. So that's basically everything except the big reptile rack that's over to my left. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at that because that's my favorite part of the room and I think that's what a lot of you are waiting for. Okay, so now we're in front of my big reptile rack. I know compared to like some standards on YouTube, this isn't big, but I feel like it's pretty big. So I have a total of six reptiles on here and one amphibian. So I'll just give you a quick overview real quick and then we'll look at each cage in a little bit more detail. I'm sorry I keep pushing my glasses up. This is why I shouldn't wear glasses and film because I get sweaty, it's just a mess. Anyway, so up here on the top, this is Pablo, one of my leopard geckos. He is in a 24 by 18 by 12 exoterra. Right beside him, I have another one of my leopard geckos. This is Felipe, who is also in a 24 by 18 by 12. And then over on this side is my one amphibian. This is Fiona, my Pac-Man frog, and she is in an 18 by 18 by 12. Down below that, I have Piper, my third and final leopard gecko. She's a little bit spoiled. She was my first leopard gecko. You guys might know I spent a almost $2,000 on her surgery, but she is doing wonderful now. She's a little spoiled, like I said, so she's actually in a 36 by 18 by 12. I do have exoterras for almost all of my reptiles. The only reptile I have that doesn't have a front opening and closure right now is Pippa, my Kenyan sand boa. That's just because she's still very small and she's in her 10 gallon, but when she moves up to an adult enclosure, she will be going in a front opening just because I don't really like top opening. Front opening just seems a lot easier for me and the animals. So that is what Piper is in and then speaking of Pippa she is right over here in her 10 gallon Zilla it has this sliding top lid and then you can't see him right now but down on the bottom shelf we have Pickle my gargoyle gecko who's in a 12 by 12 by 18 he's still a baby so he needs his adult enclosure pretty soon because he is finally growing and then over here we have the largest enclosure and largest animal I have, which is Kevin, my bearded dragon. He is in a four by two by two Zen habitat. So now that you guys kind of know where everyone is and have a little overview, let's start up at the top with Pablo and just show you a little bit more detail about each enclosure. So my camera does not want to focus at all. So I'll go ahead and open this up. I am using the camera handheld from now on. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit shaky and I'm trying not to hit the microphone on the edge of the cage, but this is Pablo. He's my leopard gecko that I got off of Craigslist about a year ago. He is a pretty cool dude. I don't really know what else to say about him except he's a pretty cool dude. I'm not sure of his morph since he was adopted off of Craigslist, but this is just a overview of his setup. He has a paper towel substrate and then just some stuff to climb on. He thinks it's time to eat, so he's really giving me the stink eye right now. But that is Pablo right there. So in the middle of the top shelf, I have Felipe, my other leopard gecko. I do have some old pieces of reptile carpet in between them so they don't see each other through the glass and try to get aggressive at all because they are both males. But this is Felipe, like I said, he's also in a 24 by 18 by 12. I'm sure he's over here in his warm hide. He is a little bit more shy still, so he usually only comes out when I'm feeding him. So he's actually not in his warm hide, which is really weird because that's where he always is. So it looks like he was actually back by his humid hide. That zoom ed heat pad you see is actually on the side of Fiona's tank, not his. But this is Felipe. I got him at a local reptile expo earlier in the year. He is a fire water, which is a rainwater albino and a tangerine. And now of course he's hiding and you can't see him. Like I said, he is a pretty shy little guy, but he's adorable, so it's fine. And then last on the top shelf is Fiona. She is my albino Pac-Man frog. I know we're not gonna see her because I just actually cleaned her enclosure two days ago and I gave her all fresh substrate and usually she doesn't bury all the way, but she actually decided to bury herself and I'm not exactly sure where she is, which is kind of terrifying because she wants to eat my hands. I'm pretty sure she's back in there because there's a little pile of dirt, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm not gonna go digging around for her, but she has her water dish, a fake plant, 
So Quark uses a hide and then another fake plant. And she does have a heat pad back on that side. And I switched up her substrate this time and I'm actually trying some jungle mix instead of Eco Earth. So unfortunately no Fiona today, but I know she's in there. And then down on the shelf below, we have the queen herself. We have Piper, my leopard gecko. She was actually the first reptile I ever got. So it is all her fault that I have any of them. She's just chilling in one of her warm hides. She actually has two warm hides. So this one and this one. And then she has a cool hide, which she uses as a toilet. And then she has a humid hide. She loves her hammock. She loves to get up on her hammock and dance for me when she thinks she needs to come out. But she is in a large flow exoterra. And instead of paper towels, I actually use tile for her. I want to get tile for Felipe and Pablo also. I just haven't got any cut. But that is all we're going to see of Piper. And then over beside Piper, we have Pippa, my Kenyan sand boa. She's just in a 10 gallon because she is still pretty small. Like I said, I I can't show her because I do need a feeder and I don't want to be pulling her out because then she's not going to eat. I can actually see her little face barely sticking out. I'm sure my camera is not going to focus through the glass, but you can barely see her right in the corner. So that is Pippa. She's supposed to be a female. Once she gets a little bit bigger, I'll probably move her into a 24 by 18 exoterra also. But for now, the 10 gallon is good. I need to put a fake plant back in here. I took it out to clean it, but she does have some wood and then she has a little piece of cork around that she actually likes to hide it. In. Usually she spends all of her time under her bedding, but I still like to give her stuff just so when she does come out, she has some stuff to explore. She's actually the only one of my animals that has a thermometer in there. I get questions about that. I actually have a digital thermometer up here, like an infrared one, and I use that for all my cages, which is why you don't see thermometers in most of them. But that is Pippa, and now we'll move down to the bottom shelf, and right under Pippa, we have Pickle. Pickle is my gargoyle gecko, and he's still in a 12 by 12 by 18 because he's growing pretty slow. He actually is going through a pretty big growth spurt right now, but it's taken a really long time for him to get there. Once he gets a little bit bigger, I'll be moving him into probably an 18 by 18 by 24, but right now this is still a good size. So we'll just open this up and I believe he's back in the corner. So here is Pickle, my gargoyle gecko. I say he, but he's actually getting a decent size now. And I think he might be a female, but I just always called him a he. So this is little Pickle. He's getting a lot better. He's not as jumpy as he was when he was little. So we'll go ahead and let him go back in here. Now he's just gonna sit on my finger. But that is Pickle, and then he just has his Pangea and everything over there. He's also using Jungle Mix instead of Eco Earth. I just like trying out some different substrates. And then to the left of him is my biggest reptile and my biggest enclosure. This is Kevin, my bearded dragon, in his brand new Zen Habitat. If you guys missed that video, I will link it down below. Zen Habitats is a brand new enclosure company, and they actually sent this to me for free to do a video on. I'm not super happy with the video I did because a lot of this wasn't in his enclosure, so I'm definitely more happy with his enclosure now than the way it looked in that video, but I'm absolutely loving this cage. It is a four by two by two, and it's made of bamboo and aluminum, so it's really lightweight. And then the front doors are acrylic. So this is just where Kevin, my bearded dragon stays. So he has his basking bulb right there, and he's actually awake. He has been trying to brewmate off and on, but he did wake up the past couple days. I'm hoping he'll stay awake, but I'm not too sure yet because this is my first winter with him. But he has been up basking for a couple days, and then he has his UVB back along the back. One of the main things that I added after that Zen Habitat video is this really long piece of wood. It's about three feet long. It gives him a lot more space to climb along with the two shelves. And then I also did put a liner in here because the bottom was a little bit too slick. So he is still pretty sleepy because he's only been up for a couple days, like I said, and I'm guessing he'll probably go back to sleep because he's still just not completely active. But that is Kevin in his Zen Habitat. So that's just an overview of my pet room. A lot has changed since the last time you guys saw it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and liked seeing everyone. Sorry we couldn't see quite everyone. If I ever find Fiona, maybe I'll post a picture of her on Instagram because you guys don't get to see her very often. I also forgot to show that I do just have storage up here. So I have some extra substrate, some extra heat bulbs, some critter keepers, just some extra stuff mainly for the reptiles. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time.